Flexible foam casting tips. In today's tutorial, we will be covering some tips for casting a new flame resistant flexible foam using an embedded armature so that our flexible foam, even though it's soft, stays straight and true to the original form. Now for this particular prop, we'll be using our new TC-296FR, which is a flame retardant foam formula, which is ideal for casting props for theme parks and theater productions where a flame rating is required. Now the first thing we did to prepare our mold was uh, we bent an armature wire in the rough shape of the wrench so that uh, it could still uh, strike an actor or actress, but uh, the armature would help it hold its overall shape since we're casting this in a, a relatively soft six pound density flexible foam. And once we bent that to fit appropriately, uh, we heated our mold. Now, anytime you're casting flexible foams, it's a good idea to heat up your mold before casting. If you don't do this step, you'll find that you get a lot of imperfections in the skin. So make sure uh, you could build a hot box like this or put it by a space heater, but warm up the inside surface of the mold before casting and you'll see much better results in the quality of skin you get on your self-skinning foam. Now to create a realistic look of steel on our pipe wrench, we're going to carefully brush some steel pigment powder into some key areas of the mold. And this is a pigment powder that will then transfer over to our cured foam part. And you want to take care to use a fine brush to keep this just in those key areas uh, where you want that look of steel. We're copying the uh, look of the pipe wrench that we molded here. So obviously uh, on hammers and things like that, you would just apply this just to the areas where you're going to have raw steel showing. Now when you're using pigment powders like this that are going to transfer from the silicone onto the cast part, it's a good idea to use a medium softness silicone. Here we're using the 7325, which is a, a 25 Shore A. Just be aware that harder silicones that are in the 40A range may have a tougher time grabbing and holding those pigment powders. Now for our foam, our flexible foam we'll be casting is the 296 FR. And this foam system is mixed 100B to 50A, or basically two to one by weight. And it's important, this is a weight ratio, so you do need a gram scale for this product. And also this particular foam is a about a six pound density flexible foam, which means the expansion rate is going to be about eight to nine times the original volume. So it will take very little foam to fill our wrench mold, which all the more reason to measure precisely and measure by weight. Because in many cases for small hand props like this, you may find that you'll only need about 30 to 40 grams of a particular product to fill the mold. And when you're working in that small of a batch size, you really need to measure as accurately and as precisely as possible. Now to our part B that I've measured out, we're adding some pigments. We're adding some red and some brown polycolor pigments. And I'm going to mix that in first before I add the part A because anytime you're working with flexible foams, just know that those systems kick off really fast. So you want to do anything you can to uh, minimize the amount of time that will be used later on once those two parts are together. So make sure your B is mixed up very well with the pigment. And then we'll be ready to zero out our scale and add the part A. Now, really important when you're working with flexible foam systems and or any kind of foam for that matter in a closed mold like you'll see us doing here in a minute, uh, it's a good idea to have an extra set of hands. It is very difficult to move fast enough to do all these steps by yourself. So be prepared to have somebody else step in and help you close the mold and strap it shut, as you'll see here in a minute. Uh, without that, you'll find that you'll have a lot of uh, bad castings with very thick seams if you don't get those molds closed up quickly. So I've got Nick standing by with the mold halves. So he's ready to put those in place and get our armature ready to go. And we're going to immediately pour that out into one half of the mold and then close it and flip it over. And that's what I call the waffle move, uh, kind of like those waffle irons you see in hotels where you pour it in one side, flip it over, and then we strap it shut. And what that does is allows that liquid foam to briefly sit in the liquid state on both sides of the mold. And that helps eliminate a lot of surface bubbles. So we poured it into one side. We're going to carefully set our armature in place. 
and close the mold. Now this foam is expanding fast, so we got to move quickly and precisely. And you'll notice Nick is ready there with the mold straps, so ready to get those in place. So I left this in warts and all, so you can see how frantic it is to close a mold like this. But uh, once we've got that shut, and you'll see that it's already coming out one end there, we're ready to leave that alone and let it cure. Now another important factor here is we have one vent out the handle of our pipe wrench. And what that allows for is that foam to be compressed and wherever it's compressed it's going to form a thicker skin against the sides of the mold. So remember that, that the way the foam is loaded into the mold and the way it's compressed, that is going to ultimately cr contribute to a thicker and tougher skin on your finished part. Now this is about 30 minutes later. We are ready to demold our part. And there should be relatively little cleanup on a part like this. If you've made a good mold and uh, you've got a good tight seam, it should take just a little bit of cleanup to remove any sprues or vents that you have. And uh, this, we've got to carefully remove this since it does have a wire inside. We want to carefully remove this without bending that wire. And now we have our prop ready to clean up and just add some finishing touches to. But again, since uh, we have a, a pretty tight mold there, we don't have a whole lot of cleanup to do on that seam. And the nice thing about mechanical parts like this is they naturally do have a seam. So you can hide your seam over the original manufacturer's seam. Now one last finishing touch we're going to do on this is we're going to add a little bit of our metal rub. This is our silver metal rub and we're just going to grab a little bit of that and dry brush it over some of those steel areas and any areas that would naturally scuff. And this just adds a little bit extra color, a little bit extra dimension to the finished part. If you, if you just go with the embedded powder pigments, uh, sometimes it looks a little bit plain. So we're going to do this over the top and just kind of bring it all together and make it look like an old scuffed pipe wrench. And if you want, you could take this a step further and add additional paints and colors to this, uh, like some of our rust paint. Uh, the Sculpt Nouveau Iron B can also be used on a prop like this to simulate realistic rust. Or you could just leave it as is. But uh, now we have our action prop ready to go. And thanks to that armature, it's going to hold its shape, but still be a safe prop for action scenes. So there's our part without an armature and one with. And there you have the basic casting process for flexible foam. And you can find our new TC296 uh, flame retardant formula on our web store. And for those of you curious about whether other projects we might have in the works around our shop, be sure to check us out on Instagram. If you uh, go to our website and click on the Instagram icon, you can check out a lot of these tutorials as they are in the works and contribute your thoughts and ideas in the comment section. So be sure to check it all out at our web store at brickintheyard.com.